I don't know how you go. Let me tell you what we did uh, in Doha virtually about three weeks ago. I was invited to their climate change webinar. Um, I was invited to comment and listen and so forth and so on. I belong to the Climate Security Working Group here in Washington, which is mostly DOD, DHS, uh, FEMA, and so forth. We are the only real federal entity that recognizes significant threat from climate change. I should say that again, because it ought to shock you. Um, we're working on the Congress, we're working on other people within the federal government. Biden has changed things a bit. He's brought Obama's policies back and even emphasized them more so. He's got a secretary of defense that says, I have three priorities, China, climate change, and what was the other one? I can't remember, it begins with C2, but climate change was there. Um, I don't know how much that means, but I do know that the military is the lead federal bureaucracy on combating climate change, both in terms of adaptation and amelioration, which means stopping all the greenhouse gases going up into the atmosphere. All that to say that what's happening with regard to climate change needs to happen globally. And I hope that was part of the conversation at the G7, the NATO summit and elsewhere. It needs to happen globally. We need to have people beginning to deal with that because if we don't, we're in real trouble. Many of the scientists with whom we consult in the CSWG on a routine basis from NASA, from RAND, from other places, think it's too late. That's the truth of it. It's too late that we're gonna suffer catastrophic climate change that by mid-century, we will have an entirely different planet. By the end of the century, we'll have over 500 million, perhaps a billion refugees if they aren't killed in the previous days. Um, and the peer powers who will be the last to be hit, the global south will be first probably, will be the last to be hit, but we're already being hit. Look at the fires, look at the hurricanes, look at the devastation, the drought in the southwest and so forth. We're already being hit, but we will be, we will not get the full effects of it until late in the century. And we'll put machine guns and troops on the border and shoot people. That's the reality of it because there will be so many people trying to get where there is potable water, where there is some food, where there is something of a prospect. And a lot of them will be young men and a lot of them will be carrying AKs with at least 20 rounds of ammunition. Um, the things we're seeing at the border right now are just a forerunner. Think about that for a minute. There are about 170 million refugees in the world today. Think about 500 million, think about a billion. That's what we're facing. If we don't get together and we don't cooperate on a global basis, and certainly domestically, we're gonna be in trouble. I made a recommendation the other day that we have a CCC type organization, um, you know, Franklin Roosevelt's Civilian Conservation Corps, only it be a climate corps. And it have two to 4 million men and women in it, draft them if necessary, conscript them if necessary. And these people are gonna be the people who have to deal with the increasing effort to combat the effects of climate change, whether it's fires all across the West and increasingly in other regions of the country, whether it's drought, the military just declared, all the services just declared drought as the number one threat climate change will produce. We thought it would be sea level rise because that's what we've been dealing with billions of dollars necessary to adapt places like San Diego, Norfolk, Charleston, Pascagoula, and so forth. Um, we thought that would be on their top threat agenda. And it's high, but drought is their number one because there are 200 installations in the US alone that are threatened by drought, directly or indirectly, because they're connected to their civilian communities. And if the civilian community is threatened, so is the military reservation. Uh, and it's not that different around the world either. Think about the South China Sea and the militarization of those atolls and little islands by China. So what? In 30 years, they'll be gone. They'll be underwater, just as Palau will be underwater, just as Kwajalein will be underwater. Um, 
long rambling story, but we've got a real challenge on our hands, perhaps the greatest challenge the planet and the human race have ever faced. Brian, you're muted. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I, I hate to do this, but I, I got it. I got another thing at nine. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're going we're gonna to leave it right there. Uh, okay, Mr. Busy. This last word from the chat uh, is how can we cooperate globally on the climate catastrophe without continu while continuing to challenge Russia and China? I'll answer that one. I don't think we can. It's You're right. cooperation or co-annihilation. That's the choice that we're faced with. Um, I, I want to thank you, uh, Colonel Wilkerson, for spending so much time with us and for being so frank and upfront 